I am old-fashioned and romantic enough to believe that many children, given the right circumstances, are natural readers until this instinct is destroyed by the media. The tyranny of the screen threatens any order in which literary value or human wisdom can be preferred to the steady flow of information. It may be an illusion to believe that the magical connection of solitary children to the best books and poems can endure, but such relationship does go so long a way back that it will not easily expire. The romance of reading, like all experiential romance, depends upon enchantment, and enchantment relies upon the potential power rather than upon complete knowledge. You are unlikely to fall in love with someone, however charming such a person may be, if you have known one another all your lives. What you can know fully will not induce you to fall in love so that falling in love with a book is not wholly unlike falling in love with a person. When I'm tired, my way of reading returns, across three score years and some, to the pleasure of reading like a child again. When I was a child, each time I fell in love with a poem, I read it again and again until I had it by heart. Then I would go off by myself whether indoor or outdoor, in order to have the pleasure of chanting it endlessly to myself. Many of the poems in this book and on this site are appropriate for recitation to yourself or others, as are nearly all of the readings in the book. I suspect that reading aloud is also a valid test for poetry and fictional prose alike. Reciting a bad poem is a distressing experience. Reading aloud a poor story is scarcely better. But it can be astonishing how an excellent story or poem suddenly expands into a cosmos of absolute illumination when one listens to its recitation. To reread Carol's Alice books is to be reminded of how strong Alice herself is and can be a path to sharing her independence. Hold your tongue, said the queen, turning purple. I won't, said Alice. Off with her head, the queen shouted at the top of her voice. Nobody moved. Who cares for you, said Alice. She had grown to her full size by this time. You are nothing but a pack of cards. The seven-year-old Alice is supremely courageous and, like Hamlet, is only mad north-northwest. Hamlet, perhaps the most fascinating person in all literature, is a dangerous role model, but Alice is both outrageous and prudential and well worth imitating. More than once in her or his life, every reader will grow to full size by crying out to the right auditors, Who cares for you? You are nothing but a pack of cards. The child alone, with his or her book, is for me the true image of potential happiness, of something ever more about to be. A child lonely and gifted will employ a marvelous story or poem to create a companion for himself or myself. Such an invisible friend is not unlike healthy phantasmagoria, but the mind learning to exercise itself in all its powers. Perhaps it is also the mysterious moment in which a new poet or storyteller comes to birth, and perhaps that will help and happen with this site.